Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, beauty products. Now, I don't wear a lot of makeup, but there are products that I use. And for us as women, we are the target audience in terms of hair care, makeup, skin care, things we put on our nails, things we do to our lashes, our body as a whole. And I'm gonna share with you today five beauty products that I will not buy again. These are products that are messing with our hormones, that are loaded with chemicals. And the difficult thing about choosing healthy skincare products, makeup and body care products, especially for us as women, is that there are very very few regulations here in Northern America about what is allowed in our products from a chemical perspective. We're talking things like formaldehyde, PFASs, which are also used in flame retardants, phthalates, xenoestrogens, sulfates, triclosan, EDTA, parabens, mineral oils, the list goes on and on. And these are endocrine disruptors. They are known carcinogens. Not only do they wreak havoc internally in our body, because what we need to remember is that our skin is an Organ. It is one of, if not our largest organs in our body outside of the amount of muscle that we have throughout our body. And it is absorbing everything that we lay on top of it every single day. Now, a lot of people will reach out because they're having skin issues, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, acne, rashes, different things like that. I do want to steer you in the direction of making sure that you are supporting your gut health, your liver health, your detoxification and elimination. But let's get down to the nitty gritty of talking about some of the products, five that I'm going to share with you today and really why this is so important. So for me, when I'm talking about things that are endocrine disruptive chemicals, a lot of the things that I already just mentioned, we're talking about these that have been linked to weight gain, hormonal imbalance overall. So we can look at the endocrine system many different ways autoimmune issues, flare-ups and conditions, gut dysbiosis, infertility, and even developmental and reproductive issues going on in the body. So these aren't just small, insignificant things. Is it going to happen after one day of using a product? No, it's going to be the cumulative effect. But think about this, from the age somewhere of around 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, we are starting as women to apply all of these different products to our bodies. We are soaking in the bath in them. We are rubbing them into our skin and that continues for decades, if not the rest of your life. And I would say it even starts younger. I mean, think about when you're bathing your babies and you're putting all the different creams and everything that's being marketed and advertised. So let's take a collective breath and let's dive in. And it starts actually with what is on or not on my hands right now, which is nail polish. Now I do sometimes wear nail polish. I use mineral based nail polish. I use companies that are free of toluene. Um, and this is like the toxic trio when it comes to nail polish. So formaldehyde, toluene, and um, dibutyl phthalate. Now, most companies, a lot of companies are really raising the bar of their standards here and removing what is known as these toxic three. But if they're not, this isn't just sitting on the enamel of your nails. And you'll see it as well too, especially if you get gel nails done and you're going to the salon and they're actually like doing the shellac where they're literally using the light to bake it on so that it lasts longer. You do this a few times over, you're gonna notice in your nails cracks and weakening, they're gonna split, they won't grow as well. You'll have dots and specks all over them. That is a sign and indication right there of how unhealthy they are, not only for the nail bed, but what is going on in your body. So there's great companies like Pacifica and Zoya and Mineral Fusion. And I'm sure depending on where you're watching this from in the world, there are many great companies where you are as well too, but that is product number one. So I try to keep my nail beds as free from polish as possible. Number two are chemical-based shampoos and conditioners. So think about it when you're going into the grocery store, you're going into the pharmacy and you're buying your regular commercial based shampoos. And I mean, wet shampoo, dry shampoo, spray shampoo, all the shampoos, daily conditioner, conditioning treatments, really understanding and flipping over and looking at those ingredients. Now there are great resources like the Think Dirty app and the EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group. What I love about this is you could take your device and inside the app, you can actually take a picture and scan the barcode of that product. And it's gonna pull it up and it'll tell you all the things that you need to be careful of that are in it. And it will give it a rating, right? Like. A to F type of thing. And it won't just say this is an A rated product or a D rated product. It's going to tell you why. So you start to become a much more informed consumer of the things that you are purchasing. And you really do have to look at this is not just like from the vanity metric. I mean, we all want to feel beautiful. We all want to do things that make us feel wonderful. We want to use products that also are usable and feel good on our skin and in our hair, but we want to do it in a way where it is not 
becoming a bottleneck of the health goals that we have for our body as a whole. So using natural, unchemically, you know, fortified shampoos and conditioners and really starting to understand the ingredients that are in there. The other thing that I would say, and this happens in the shower as well, is shaving cream. I haven't used shaving cream in honestly, probably a decade for a few reasons. Number one, I don't want another can or product in my shower minimal simplicity. I don't want to put that back out into the environment. And if you read the ingredients, the foaming agents and the chemical surfactants that are in that shaving cream, and let's think about this. You're in a hot shower, okay? We want the hot water. We are lathering up our legs, our underarms, our bikini line area, wherever else it is that you are shaving in a hot environment where the pores are vasodiling. And now we're applying chemical shaving cream on top of our skin and then we are using a razor and we are shaving the skin but we are also taking off that top epidermis that top layer of the skin which is now making us more vulnerable pores open chemicals just seep right into the bloodstream and make their way into the lymphatic system do you know what's better if you've never tried using shampoo bars uh, and conditioning bars okay there's a great company that ships around the world that i'm obsessed with called hello good juju their conditioning bars for your hair you can use as your shaving you also can purchase from them. They have specific shaving bars. If you don't wanna like cross what you're putting on your scalp to what you're putting on your legs or your underarms, tiny little disc, you are gonna get months worth out of this. So it's gonna save you money. It's better for the environment outside and inside of your body. So ditch the shaving cream and use those shaving bars. Life changer, smooth and emollient. Number four is commercial makeup. You know, some of the bigger companies that I'm talking about, they're the ones that are on your television screen that are coming through the commercials on your Amazon Prime, on your, like when you're watching your Prime channel, your Netflix, all of that. And again, are they in the uh, pharmaceutical department of your drugstore? Are they where you're buying your bread? You may want to start to shop in a different area, different store. Big companies now like Sephora are becoming slightly more committed to carrying great brands like Ilia is a really good one that they have in there. Um, and just actually, again, doing your homework. So scanning those barcodes and really understanding what's in there. We want to make sure that our makeup has clean ingredients. There are some that you could purchase from online. Beauty Counter is a great one. What I love is that they list every single thing out. There's nothing that's hidden. You don't have to be a detective on their website to figure out what's inside of it. Mineral Fusion is another great company. Benico's RMS, um, Rosemary Sweeney. And just start to actually look because here's the thing I'm going to tell you. I have been doing this for decades. There are companies that I swore by, that I wrote about in my book, that were so amazing. And then I'll have someone reach out and say, oh my gosh, you know that product that you used to talk about? Did you see they've been changed the ingredients now? And it includes, you know, whatever chemical. Oh, and it's so deflating, but it's a reminder that every time we go and purchase something, take the extra moment to just flip it around and read what is in it. Now, the fifth one is perfume. I have not worn perfume since I gave birth to my first child almost 17 years ago. And the reason was, is I was like, I don't want to have all this fragrance around my neck and then I'm holding her up here and she's breathing into it or I'm nursing her and she is being exposed to it. And so I just stopped doing fragrances overall. Then I started to move towards essential oils and, and now it's just eau de naturel. Sometimes if I want something, I'll apply a really good quality essential oil. I love doTERRA. Young Living is a good company. Um, I get asked about different ones that you buy in the mall because people can have that weird energy around MLMs. Again, just look at the quality and try it for yourself. There should be no ingredient listed on your essential oil that says fragrance. Living Libations, that's another one. Nadine Artemis, her company, she has makeup products, skincare products. Oh my goodness, beautiful, beautiful products. So company-wise, North America, I would say Living Libations, Skin Essence, Hello Good Juju. These are beautiful companies where they stand by integrity and quality in their ingredients. So that's it today. Those are my five things that I will not buy. Nail polish, chemical shampoo and conditioner, including dry shampoos, shaving cream, commercialized makeups that are not clean and beautiful for our skin, and perfumes. Top five right there. Any questions about this, pop them below. Make sure to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. And be sure to head on over to genpike.com to read about all the ways that my team and I can help support you in your health and your living, and as always, creating more simplicity and more ease in all that you do.